Imagine you find your child holding an empty bottle of aspirin. You're not sure how much they swallowed, if any. Would you know what to do? Staying calm and following some practical steps will help you make the right decisions. With us right now is Dr. Frank Rosenblum. He's a poison expert. Well, I have to admit, I would be pretty scared at that moment and wouldn't know exactly what to do. Well, I think most people would be very scared at that moment. And the important thing to know is that it's not an insurmountable problem. With the proper amount of preparedness and just taking simple steps, you can certainly uh, be prepared for such an emergency so that you can react to it properly. One of the things you can do is to make sure that you have the proper phone numbers uh, already in your phone. The National Poison Help Center and 911, any other emergency numbers should be already programmed into your phone. Okay, when we talk about poisonings, I mean, I kind of envision maybe somebody swallowing some drain cleaner or something like that, but I guess that's not the only way people can get poisoned. Poisons can be absorbed in many different ways. You can absorb them through inhalation, obviously through ingestion. They can be injected into the skin somewhere, such as in bee stings or snake bites, and they can also be absorbed through the skin just by topical application of that poison. How do we know if somebody's been poisoned? Are there some common symptoms we can watch out for? There are. Uh, we have to realize that different poisons take a different amount of time to, to begin working. It's important to note whether or not a person has the close proximity to a poison in order to be poison. The second thing you can look for are things like fragments or foaming or something coming from the mouth, nausea, vomiting, listlessness, undue level of fatigue. Okay, so say you have an idea that somebody's been poisoned. What kind of things should you do right away? Well, the first thing, as we mentioned before, is to stay calm, especially if you're prepared for the emergency, like as we talked about before, uh, that's the most important thing, stay calm. The second thing is to observe the person who's been poisoned, observe the child. If you see anything that is indicative in their mouth, either some liquid or some pill fragments or vomitus, uh, then that wants to be, you wanna remove that from their mouth. If they're not breathing, if down, if down on the ground, call 911 right then, right? You call 911 immediately and initiate, uh, the, uh, initiate the resuscitative measures that they're explaining to you on the phone or that hopefully you've, you've trained yourself for prior to that. You see your child or someone you think has been poisoned, they're not unconscious, you decide you wanna call poison help, you have that number on speed dial as we mm -hmm. talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. What kind of things should you be ready to tell the operator? They're gonna ask you specific questions about you know, who, what, where, and when. And that's very important. Who is the patient? What is the age of the patient? What did they ingest? When did they ingest it? And where are they right now? What about the old adage of, you know, if you think they swallowed poison, try to make them vomit? That's a very, uh, very unproductive thing to do. It can be very dangerous. The best thing to do is not to do that. Are there any other reasons why somebody might want to call poison help? Yes, there are. Suppose the child is bitten by a spider, stung by a bee or a wasp, or bitten by a snake. The other thing is if you think that you have given your child the medication they're supposed to be getting, but you've given too much of it. Parents can also use the National Poison Help number and website for information on poison prevention, questions, stickers, magnets, all kinds of things. So being prepared about knowing what to do when an emergency happens is very important so that you can remain calm and take the necessary steps. If you take away only three things, remember this. Number one, keep a list of emergency numbers by the phone and on your cell phone as well. Number two, remain calm and remember you are prepared for this emergency. And number three, when calling poison help, follow the operator's instructions exactly. Okay, well, Dr. Rosenblum, this information has been so straightforward and so good. I think that now I could be a little bit more calm, know exactly what to do, should I be faced with one of these emergencies. Great. It's all about preparation. It certainly is.